Hello, this video is a follow-on to a video I made about how to evaluate the P-E ratio for a stock. That's the price-to-earnings ratio. And the thing we're going to account for in this video is the effect of a stock split or a share repurchase on the underlying earnings per share value and as a result the P-E ratio for the stock. So if I'm not addressing content that you feel comfortable with, please go watch the first part of the video before continuing. If we remember the P-E ratio, the P-E ratio is equal to the price per share divided by the earnings per share. Now, the thing that's going to change when we discuss stock splits is this denominator right here, earnings per share. Because if you think about these two, the numerator and the denominator, both of them are also fractions. The price per share is the price of the stock for every share that's currently outstanding. The earnings per share is the earnings per stock uh, for the stock for the number of shares outstanding. But we're going to find out that time is very important when thinking about when you're when you're calculating these values. I'll tell you why. Let's let's jump from from theory to example by looking at Monster Beverage Corporation. In 2016, Monster Beverage completed what's called a three-for-one stock split. Stock split, the way, the way stock splits work is imagine, if you will, imagine that you had a, a circle. This is the way stock splits work. Now, imagine that this was this. There was only one share of stock uh, in the market uh, for the, for for this hypothetical company. And let's say that you had a two for one split. A two for one split. This is how the the two for one split. The way it's written is two colon one. Two for one split. The way that works is, for every share that is currently outstanding. At, after the split, there will current there will be two shares. So now your company has this many shares outstanding after a two for one split. Let's say that again a year later the stock does another two for one split. Now you split the existing shares by two again, and you now have a total of four shares. So let's let's take it further. Another two for one split would result in the stock being split yet again. And every time you do a two for one split, you just end up with double the number of shares. So if we start with a circle of if we start with a circle here, and we say that this circle is divided into three equal parts, I'm just I'm just going to estimate here what three equal parts would look like. Um, a, cir a circle divided into three equal parts.
do I do that? I don't know, something like that. A circle divided into three equal parts. If that would be the result of a three for one stock split. You had one share and now you have three. Then if you did a two for one stock split on top of that, you would divide each share in half, doubling the number of shares. So that's how you do stock splits. You take the original number of shares, and if it's a stock split, you multiply by the this this character this number that appears before the colon. So if it's a three for one split, if there was a hundred shares outstanding, and then there was a three for one split, the way you find out the the new total number of shares is by multiplying by three because everybody everybody's existing shares are now are now now hold is only one third of the, the proportion of the company that they previously did so you're increasing the number of shares when you do a split this incidentally is called the split ratio these are split ratios Let's see the effect. Now, the, the reason this is important with respect to time is because if our annual report, our 10K, was filed before the stock split was announced, certainly before it was recorded and, and executed, then our earnings per share data that we get from the annual report will be wrong. And let's look at an example where if you did not account for a stock split, your earnings per share would be wrong. And let's see the effect that that has on the P-E ratio. So I want to go back here, uh, remembering our P-E ratio, and we're going to look at a specific example of one of my favorite brands. I really don't know how it is as a company, but one of my favorite brands, uh, Monster Beverage Corporation. And their symbol, their ticker symbol, is M N S T. M N S T. Now this company, this company trades uh, on the stock market and in November of 2016 they executed a three for one split. So we say here, in November of 2016, there was a three-for-one split. So the split ratio is three to one. For every existing share, there are now three. That's how we, that's how we look at it. So let's, let's first, before we introduce this information, let's take a look at what the price per share was trading at we think about our we need to find the price per share let's just for example let's just say that we didn't know that and we are going back in time now to imagine that we are living at the time of 2016 let's imagine for the moment that we did not know this and look at the price per share of the stock after the stock split, but using the previous year's data. I'll, I think it'll be clear as I do it. We're going to look at market, market data for Monster Beverage Corporation after the market knows about the stock split, but we're going to be using data. Like if I, was, if I gave you a problem and said, uh, I want you to take the price per share, the average price per share on on December 15th of 2016 for Monster Beverage Corporation. 
if their annual reports don't come out in, in, until January 1st of the following year, you would go to the 10K for the previous year and look at the earnings per share. If, if we haven't learned yet about quarterly earnings, so if you're if you know about quarterly earnings, don't don't fault this video. It's the idea is if the only thing you know how to do is look up the most recent year's 10K in order to find earnings per share, then this will be an instructive problem. So for, we're going to imagine that we don't yet know about the split. Okay. So let's go and look at historical price data for Monster Beverage Corporation and see what, what we can learn. Okay, so here's Monster stock right here. And I'm going to look at the five-year chart. And I can go back and look at prices wherever I want. So I'm going to look at a price that comes after November of 2016. Okay, let's take let's take uh, December twenty third of twenty sixteen. So here is this is the uh, price per share was forty five dollars and fifty seven cents on December twenty third, twenty sixteen. On December 23rd of 2016, the price was $45.57. And this was the price per share on December 23rd. Twenty sixteen. So now we're thinking about price per share with a date. What is the date of the price per share? It's December twenty third of twenty sixteen. So if I'm looking at earnings per share using the old way, which I'll do in red, because it's it's the this is the way that we're going to learn is a fallacious way to do this. We'll go back to our screen and look this up in the SEC Edgar database and see what we get. We're, of course, because they, we're going to assume that they haven't filed their annual report for 2016 yet because the year is not over. They're still operating the company. So we're going to look at the annual report for 2015, the 10K for 2015. And the thing is, the stock split occurred in November of 2016. So any data that's been submitted to the SEC in just in 2015, after the stock split, that data from 2015 will be will be old. It, it will have it will have earnings per share data calculated without adjusting for the stock split. That's the problem. So let's go back and check that and see what would happen. Okay, so I'm going to the SEC Edgar database, and company search, and then over here in the ticker section, I'm going to type in the ticker for Monster Beverage Corporation, and I'm going to select the filing type 10-K for the annual report. Now look, take a look at this. Their 10-K for, for 2015's data was filed on February 29th of 2016. So this one does not account for the stock split. This happened before. The stock split happened in November of 2016 this annual report was filed in February of 2016. So we'll look at documents and then we'll look at the 10K itself. 
one monster away. All right, I love it. And then scroll down to the consolidated operations or financial data. Here we go. Uh, selected financial data is what we want. Now, look at the net income per common share. Whoops. Net income per common share. This is what we're looking at. And what we want to know is the most recent data. It says here, the most recent data says the earnings per share was $2.90 for the basic, the undiluted shares. $2.90. So using the old method, what you would have put, EPS, and remember this is going to be for, oh, what was the filing date of that? Um, February of 2016, we'll just, I can't remember the date, so it's Feb 2016 equals $2.90. So using the method from the first video, what we would calculate is the earnings per share, or pardon me, the price to earnings ratio would be, let's see if I can get this to where you can see it, would be 45.57 divided by 290. Gives you a PE ratio of 15.71. And we'll just round to the nearest whole number and say 16. Gives you 16. That means that the earnings per share, the price per share is 16 times the earnings per share. But remember, this one doesn't account for the stock split. Now let's account for the stock split and then recompute. Let's account for the stock split and recompute, knowing that in November of 2016, there was a stock split of 3 to 1. That means for every, every outstanding share, there are now three shares. So every share that was outstanding got diluted, like pouring water into uh, a concentrated Kool-Aid would dilute it out. The... These shares are now, each one of them only has one third of its previous value. So the earnings per share will be one third what they were before the split. If that, does that make sense? Let me, let me show it. So here is uh, how... a three for one split affected monsters earnings per share. Here's how the three for one split affected the earnings per share for monster stock. We take 290, this is the EPS, we'll call this the pre-split EPS, and then you divide that by the split factor of 3. So what this has the same effect of multiplying the total number of shares by 3 because earnings per share is itself a fraction, earnings over shares. So by taking earnings divided by shares divided by three, you're essentially tripling the number of shares in the denominator of earnings per share. So let's take 290 divided by three. Point nine, point 0.966, so we'll call that 0.97. So
So this is an important number because the this earnings per share, this is what we would call earnings per share post split. Now, the question is, before we lose the thread, let's recompute our P-E ratio. So this is our post split adjustment PE and we'll take the we'll take the same price per share as the numerator so here's price per share is 45.57 and then our earnings per share post split of 97 cents What is the price to earnings ratio adjusted for the stock split? 45.57 divided by 0.97. That gives us a PE ratio of 46.97. So that's uh, 47. Now take a look at these two numbers here. <clears throat> Notice that this post split PE is three times the pre split PE. The, the pre-split PE, uh, once we adjust for it, the actual PE ratio jumps up to 47, and it, it multiplies by three times. So here's a, here's the point I'm trying to make, okay? The market average PE ratio is, right now, is, is 25 for the S&P 500. So if we're asking ourselves... Is, is Monster stock currently underpriced, evenly priced, or overpriced? Um, then if we just, if we look at this number right here, we go, oh, Monster stock looks like a bargain. But the problem is, in this example, because of this time difference, this is the key. The price that you're using comes from December of 2016, but the earnings that you're using come from February of 2016, and there's a piece of information that happened in November that is not included in this number, namely a three-for-one stock split. So once we adjust for that, we see that the actual, the, the, the whole time this was reality, that the actual P.E. ratio was 47, which means that the price per share is 47 times as large as the earnings per share. Now, you can actually read stock splits in the market. Let's go back to this chart really quick. I'm going to share the screen only and go back to this chart for Monster. MNST, MNST stock. Remember, that split happened in November of 2016. So let's take a look at let's take a look at what happened from from October about right maybe September to right after the stock split. You'll see that it dropped 15%. The stock dropped right there. You see it dropped right there just from October 28th to November 18th. It dropped 
Well, that the reason it dropped like that is because the stock split. The stock split, so the price dropped. But that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the underlying company. It just means that people are adjusting for the fact that each share is now priced differently. It's now worth one third of its previous value. So you can see splits happen in the market and you have to know what you're looking at. You have to know what news happened during this time period to understand the context in which that price dropped so much. Now, you know, splits are announced well in advance of their actual occurrence. So the we would really be looking for something like a 30% drop in the market since each share is worth one third of its former value. And you see that it's not exact because this is not an exact science. But you see that uh, there was a 22% drop from July to November as the market absorbed the information that there's going to be a stock split. Uh, that happened. So if we go back to our screen. I hope this has been helpful. You need to account for stock splits when you're computing the price to earnings ratio. You need to make sure, especially if your denominator in the price to earnings ratio equation has information in it that comes from an annual report that was published and printed and published and assembled before before the stock split occurred one way to completely avoid this issue it's not that hard to account for this okay but one way to completely avoid this issue is to use not per share data but whole market data for the PE ratio like you would put instead of price per share you would put market capitalization the total market capitalization that would be the price per share times the total number of outstanding shares and then instead of earnings per share down here you would just put total earnings so you'd take the earnings per share time the total number of shares and you would come up with the total earnings and that would be like net income in the income statement so you'd have these enormous numbers there'd be some millions of shares times some billions of dollars so that would give you a huge number in the numerator and a you'd have a smaller number in the denominator but the price to earnings ratio that you calculate uh, would not be affected by the total number of shares so one way to go about avoiding this issue of calculating and adjusting for stock splits would be to just use the whole numbers of market capitalization and total net income that would give you uh, a number that you could use at any point in time without having any issues with stock splits anyway I hope this has been helpful um, in the I'd like to continue this discussion using more examples in a future video, but for now, thank you very much for watching.